Hello everyone, it's Elaine. Thank you for joining me here today on my YouTube channel. I'm making an interactive sliding window card for card number two of my Halloween card series for this year. I've got a piece of heavyweight white card stock here measuring four and a quarter by five and a half. And I've got a fluffy bending brush and some Distress Oxide ink in sponge sugar. And I'm gonna be blending on that color to about two thirds of the way down. I have super sped this footage up. And now I can come in with Picked Raspberry Distress Ink and my Rolling Cloud Stencil by My Favourite Things. And I'm gonna just twist and turn the stencil all the way down where I put that sponge sugar for a pink tone on tone cloud effect. I've smooshed on some Picked Raspberry Distress Ink and Black Soot Distress Ink onto my glass craft mat. Loosened it with some water and splattered that on. I've made myself a grassy stencil here with a piece of acetate and a grassy border die. And I'm using my black soot distress ink to blend on my ground. I'm focusing most of the darker colour towards the edge of that stencil and fading out for a gradient look. We will be distressing this with some black paint. So once I'm happy with that, I take the black paint out of my Ganzai Tambi watercolour palette, loosen that with some water and just splatter that on. I left that to dry for about 10 minutes and then I can bring in this sliding window die by Sunny Studio Stamps, centred that up and ran it through my die cut machine. This little half moon notch die also comes in the set. So again, just centering that up and running it through my die cut machine. Voila, we have our rectangle which is cut three sides of the way round and the die also scores this top line which I am now burnishing with my bone folder. I'm just gently bending in the middle the other score line and lastly this small flap at the bottom and this is what is going to adhere to our pulley tab in a moment. You can see it's starting to come together. So this white piece of cardstock here is going to be our pulley tab. But first of all, we're popping some quarter of an inch score tape along that bottom edge. Remove the release paper and then centering up this piece of cardstock here, which measures four and seven eighths by three and a half. We're pushing that down and securing it to that bottom piece of tape and that's gonna form our sliding mechanism. For the second part of our card today, we are making our shaker panel, and this measures five and a quarter by four inches, so slightly smaller than the other panel. Coming in with some Distress Oxide inks in the same color as before. As you pull back the sliding window panel, this is the shaker panel you're going to see. So I wanted to add some color, but I'm not being too particular about the style. I'm adding a piece of foam tape all around the edge, probably about an eighth of an inch in width. Using my little embossing buddy here to get rid of any stickiness. And I'm coming in with my mini misty and a sentiment. Probably should have done this before I added the foam tape, but I think I do just about get away with it. Any sentiment of your choice will do. This particular one is quite an old one from MFT. Once I'd let that dry a little, I'm popping in all my shaky bits, removing my release paper from that foam tape, and I'm popping a bit of acetate on top, which measures the same size as that card stock underneath. Pressing that down securely. I'm bringing back in my sliding window panel, just securing that down with some post-it tape to help make things a little bit easier for myself. And this time I'm using an eighth of an inch score tape and I'm going around the edge of that pulley tab, not directly against it, otherwise it will be a bit too tight and the pull tab won't move. So just be a bit careful of that. Just pull off that masking tape and now I can adhere my shaker panel to my sliding window panel and voila! Our card is starting to come together 
and look really cool. So now I'm moving on to the colouring section of my video. I have stamped out these little cute Halloween critters from Hello Bluebird. The stamp set is called Halloween Party. And I'm using my Copic markers to colour these in. The images are stamped onto some Copic friendly cardstock with my Memento Tuxedo Black ink. And I did use my Silhouette machine to cut out these critters, but I do have the matching dies. But on my next image, you'll see why I generally use my Silhouette because I like a certain section of the stamp to be cut out and the die doesn't do that. So that's just personal preference. The colours I'm using for my critters are all listed on the screen. You'll also find them down in the description box below and on my coordinating blog post, which I'll link to in the description box below as well. You will see that I do repeat quite a few of the colours, especially this RV66 and 63. I wanted to tie that in on all of my critters today so they all have that colour on them at some point. I think that really all ties the card together. Absolutely adore that little bunny carrying his lantern. And this is the card or the image which I like to cut out with my silhouette. If you're interested in how I use my silhouette machine and my pick scan mat to cut out my images and stamp them, then I'll link or put a card up on the screen I will link to it down in the description box below as well. It's quite old. Um, maybe I'll redo it at some point before the end of the year, but it is quite a helpful video if you're interested in using your silhouette machine to cut out your images. So again, you can see I've used that pink on the little cape and on the band of the hat. I'm now coming in to color the cauldron. And you will see where the vapours or smoke is coming up from the cauldron. And in between my pussycat, I like that section to be cut out and show the background behind. So that's why I like using my silhouette. Coming in with some E70 markers for the body of the cat. I sometimes struggle to blend these colours, but today everything was working in my favour and I was really happy with the blends I got. These are such an adorable images. And I love the way they the scene all came together. Just finishing off with some shading around the edges of his tummy. And then I come back in to finish off the hands or the paws or the arms, which I forgot. I did use this darkest of E70s to add the little triangles to the tail and the sides of the face. I think that really finishes off his face really nicely and adds a little bit of detail. Colouring his spoon with some E30s and then colouring in these vapours with some V markers. Onto my final image. Again, coming in with those RV66 and RV63. I do use the tip to tip method here because my colours weren't blending quite as nicely as I would have liked. And my bunny did start to look quite dark with this E37, but as you'll see as we move back down through the colours, down to the E31 and E30, it does soften that colour and lighten it up quite a lot. So I was much happier with the lighter shading. Finishing off the bottom of his body. R21 for the cheeks and the ears and a little bit of grey for the tail. Coming in to finish off the pumpkin. These are my favourite colours for pumpkins. 
some white R markers and coming back in with those E70s for the stalk of the pumpkin. So that finishes off the colouring for today. The Boo To You dye from Hello Bluebird was cut twice from some black cardstock. I did this because this cardstock isn't particularly heavyweight and we're going to have this sentiment popping up and standing alone when we pull that to a sliding window die. So I needed it to be sturdy. Adding some black glaze jelly roll pen to give some dimension to this sentiment and it catches the light when it moves so I think it looks really cool but it's really subtle as well. So set that aside and we can start adding our critters to the card. So the, I like to do this by slightly pulling up that pulley mechanism and I'm adding some liquid adhesive to the lower part of that sentiment just getting that straight and then I can properly secure that down. Bringing in my other little critters here, bending the ears and placing them exactly how I want them. And that's all starting to come together really nicely. I'm using a crocodile here and an eyelet and I do thread through some tulle to finish off this card. Do check out my other sliding window cards I've made in the past. There are other ways to finish off this part of the card, maybe with a sentiment like pull here or a little die cut arrow. So definitely check that out in the description box below. I'm adding some Spectrum Noir sparkle pen to some of the elements of the critters and some glossy accents on the lantern. And finally, some black glaze jelly roll pen to the eyes. And that is today's card complete. I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to check out all the links in the description box and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.